Hi, I'm Amy Dagerstrom. Welcome to the Museum Roadshow. I'm the Executive Director of the Becker County Museum, and today we're going to talk about electrifying Minnesota. Uh, electricity is something that we take for granted today and we use for everything, but of course it's something that hasn't always been available and really not that long ago. In Becker County, electricity really didn't come into play until about 1937 with the formation of the Rural Electrification Association, uh, and really didn't get into its full swing until the mid-1950s. So there are many people who just 50 years ago didn't have electric power in their home. Uh, the state of Minnesota, though, was working towards electricity much earlier than that. So everybody knows Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, of course, creates the light bulb in 1882 and really was working towards having electric power in the home. And of course, who was in the home at that time? Women. And so the earliest electricity was really marketed towards women in society because it's going to make your job so much easier, right? You're going to have electric irons and electric electric lamps and electric ovens and, and stoves and electric vacuum cleaners. So all of these things that were really very labor intensive became very simple by ha adding electric power. So Edison's idea of, of marketing transfers eventually to cities. And in cities, you have the idea that electricity can be used on a broader scale. So using electricity for street lamps, for example, or for business districts. Part of the reason it took a little while for that to happen is because uh, the electricity had to gain a bigger power source in a literal way. So initially electricity is being powered by steam power, very much like a locomotive. Um, they eventually come up with ideas of, or ways to make that into a simpler process. So using uh, electric current in a literal way to power itself. So using electricity and magnets to, to power that system. Um, and so as time goes by, you have electricity moving towards things that people use every day, like telephones. So this idea that you could talk on the phone, which wasn't a new idea, certainly. Um, if telephones were invented in the 19th century, but it wasn't really until the 20th century that you start to have the idea of switchboards and widespread telephone usage that are powered by electric current. So this new idea of moving both uh, power and voice through an electric current was a really exciting way to uh, use electricity in a new in a new system, I suppose. Um, it was a big deal to be able to talk to somebody across the country rather than just uh, use a telegraph, for example, and get a note from that same person. Now, of course, those early telephones were all party lines, right? So everyone liked to listen in on the, but that's how you got the gossip of the local area. And switchboard operators in Becker County actually had their switchboards at home. So if you were trying to make a phone call at one o'clock in the morning, that woman would have to get up and tr connect to your call no matter what time of day. So it was really a 24-hour service um, as part of that kind of growth of electric use. Electricity in cities were very common by the turn of the century. In Detroit Lakes, we had electric power by 1893. But in rural America, electricity was much slower in coming. And the reason for that was really that the cost was prohibitive. So to get power one mile at that time from the city limits was $1,500 per mile, which was an enormous amount of money in 1930, 35. So in 1935, as part of the New Deal, FDR starts to offer uh, the Rural Electrification Association or administration um, funding so that the power could be distributed to those rural environments. In Becker County, those first co-ops co start to form, so the Wild Rice Co-op forms in 18, or excuse me, 1937. Um, the uh, Lakes Region Electric Co-op starts forming in about the same era, 1939 or so. Otter Tail Power starts to form up at that time as well. And these cooperatives are really a way for individual families and farmers in rural America to join forces to get power to their homes. So you can see in some of these photos, we've got power lines that are running across uh, rural America, we're all familiar with those in this neck of the woods. Those power lines, again, at the, at the time that they were started were about $1,500 per mile. By joining together and, and working towards federal funding, which occurred in 1939 and 1946, suddenly those power lines were easier to fund. And so you have $150,000 from the government um, to put towards that work. That meant 600 jobs for line 
admin. It also meant uh, a much easier time. So rather than paying that money out of pocket, the cooperative is paying per kilowatt hour rather than per mile. And so you're going from $1,500 a mile to 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So it was a much easier system, affordable system, because you're working all together as a group. Farmers really benefited from this because of the fact that their daily life became easier. So if you're unloading hay pre-electricity, you can see in the picture here, it was a quite a physical task. You were using pitchforks and a lot of, of back strength, right? Suddenly with electric power, you have uh, lifts that could take your hay up into the hay mow for you. You have balers that um, can be used with those lifts. So you'd, suddenly you have this very organized and, and kind of well-oiled machine in the literal way to get your hay from field to barn. Uh, barns were almost always the first place that electricity came to because that was your money, right? That was your money source. And so homes often would get power a few years later. Um, they may have used hydropower, so a well pump, for example. Uh, they may have used wind power. Windmills were quite popular, and you could see them. They would have a generator at the base, which would create some electricity. And that would be used for things like cooking most often than not, still using a uh, lamp and candle for, um, for that daily power, for reading and kind of daily life. Now, the city of Detroit Lakes, uh, suddenly or, or as time went by becomes interested in working in this cooperative way. And so the REA really is uh, working in this way that's using many, many um, individuals as a group to get better funding and to make it easier for them. And cities start to see the benefit of that. And so Detroit Lakes, for example, joins the Missouri River Cooperative and that generates power from the Missouri River hydropower um, that's shared amongst Iowa, Minnesota, North and South Dakota, they start to get power from wind farms in the Dakotas. They start to get power from coal plants in South Dakota. And so really, in the end, municipal power and rural power start to look very, very much the same. They have the same system. They have the same ideas. And so as you can see, electricity is a complicated topic. It's one that's relatively new in our lives, but certainly very important. And we hope that you stop by the Becker County Museum to check out our um, artifacts and exhibits about rural electrification and electric power in Minnesota. Thanks for joining the Museum Roadshow. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.